Welcome back to the sixth episode of Motown Geography's Country Series. In this video, MGC will be venturing to the Caribbean island nation of Antigua and Barbuda. As always, let's quickly review the trivia question from our last video before we start with Antigua. The question was, which famous Cuban revolutionary figure was sent to Angola to train and support Angolan rebel troops? And the answer is... Che Guevara! That's right, Che Guevara, the famous Cuban revolutionary, met with leftist leader Agostino Nero in Angola and helped train Angolan independence guerrillas during the Angolan War of Independence. Let's get back to Antigua and Barbuda. Antigua and Barbuda is a small group of islands located in the Lesser Antilles of the Caribbean Sea. The nation is entirely surrounded by water, with the Caribbean Sea to its west and the Atlantic Ocean to the east. Rather than countries like Nauru or Haiti, which consist of a single island or part of an island, Antigua and Barbuda is composed of two main islands, Antigua and Barbuda, and several other smaller islands in between, including Great Bird Island, Green Island, and Prickly Pear Island. The smaller, somewhat isolated territories of Antigua and Barbuda are largely uninhabited, allowing for incredibly diverse wildlife to flourish unobstructed. We'll cover the amazing flora and fauna of Antigua and Barbuda later on in the video. The island Antigua, also called Waladli by the native population, is around 54 miles in circumference, making it the largest island in the nation. On Antigua lies St. John's, the capital of Antigua and Barbuda, and the main economic center for not just the small island nation, but the entire Lesser Antilles. The highest point in Antigua and Barbuda is Mount Obama, the ancient remnant of a volcanic crater which reaches 1,319 feet in height. Down by the coasts, reefs, lagoons, and natural harbors are common across the islands of both Antigua and Barbuda. Barbuda, for one, hosts one of the most spectacular natural lagoons, the Codrington Lagoon, in the entire Caribbean. Naturally, tourism is the largest industry, accounting for about half of the nation's GDP. We'll get to more of this later in the economics section. Much of Antigua's tourism industry is based in and around the VC Bird International Airport, a few miles northeast of capital St. John, and Antigua and Barbuda's expansive cruise industry. The great flag of Antigua and Barbuda is composed of a classic multicolor scheme consisting of two symmetrical triangles with three horizontal bands and a rising sun in between. The black band represents the primarily African heritage of the country. More on that in the demographics section. While the blue band symbolizes hope for the future. The bottommost white band is meant to evoke imagery of the country's dazzling beaches and sun, which is also represented through the rising yellow star. Antigua and Barbuda, being a relatively small group of islands, houses a population of only 98,000 people as of July 1, 2020. Out of this population, around 87.3% are of African descent, the rest being mixed, Hispanic, white, and other. This is largely due to Antigua and Barbuda's early colonization by the British Empire. 
who facilitated the creation of a slave-dependent tobacco and sugar industry on the islands. Following the 1834 emancipation of the slaves, much of the former slave population were reintegrated into the island community as free laborers who eventually, in 1958, joined the West Indies Federation and formally separated from the British Crown. Naturally, the colonizing British influence resulted in the dominant language of the nation being English, while Antiguan Creole is also widespread. Almost all practitioners of religion in Antigua and Barbuda are Christian, with around 68% being Protestant and 8% Roman Catholic. Antigua and Barbuda is almost entirely limited to sea-slash-ocean water access. There are only six inland lakes across the islands, none of which are of significant size or political importance. There are seven rivers that pass through the nation, uh, but most of which are small creeks that meander through the island Antigua. The island Barbuda, meanwhile, has no stream or rivers. Rather along its western coast lies the extensive Codrington Lagoon. Antigua and Barbuda, being an island, is entirely surrounded by the ocean, which has supported a small fishing industry. Antigua and Barbuda are collectively home to five national parks, four of which are situated on the island of Antigua, and one on the island of Barbuda. The most famous of these is Nelson's Dockyard National Park, a Georgian era marina full of museums, hotels, restaurants, and competitive boat races. Unfortunately, the wildlife of both Antigua and Barbuda has been devastated, partially due to the destruction of the island's rainforests by British colonists hundreds of years ago. Today, the islands are home to 182 species of bird, including the white-cheeked pintails, the Caribbean coots, caribs, and the lesser Antillean flycatcher. Deep within the jungles of the islands lurk many reptilian and amphibian creatures, including the endangered racer snake and Caribbean geckos. Around the islands, one can spot crustaceans, dolphins, sea turtles, whales, and a great variety of tropical fish. Now you may be wondering, what climate conditions have caused this variety of wildlife? Let's find out in our next section on climate. The islands of Antigua and Barbuda are located near the equator and see little variation in temperature year-round. Temperatures range from around 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius in the winter to 81 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius in the summer or autumn. The climate of the islands is hot and humid with trade winds from the northeast. From June to November is the rainy season in which daily rain is common. The islands are also vulnerable to tropical storms and hurricanes, which occur every two to three years. Since 1981, the government of Antigua and Barbuda has been a constitutional monarchy, mixed with a parliamentary system modeled off the government of the United Kingdom. It is divided into three branches, the executive, the judicial, and the legislative. The executive branch is headed by the prime minister, currently Han Gaston Brown, who appoints members of parliament to be his or her cabinet ministers. The legislature, also called the parliament, consists of two chambers, a house of representatives that introduces legislation and a senate which reviews legislation. The Prime Minister is the leader of the majority party in the House of Representatives. The judicial branch is made up of two main courts, the Magistrates' Courts, which deals with minor offenses, and the High Court, which presides over larger offenses. 
The Constitution of the Republic guarantees fundamental rights to its citizens, including freedoms of speech, association, and religion. Although this government is based in Antigua, it is important to note that Barbuda has an additional government, called the Council of Barbuda, which has some say over local and foreign affairs. The most dominant political party in Antigua and Barbuda is called the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, abbreviated ABLP. The ABLP was founded by the first Prime Minister of the nation, Veer Cornwall Byrd, and advocates for social democracy. In 1992, the United Progressive Party formed as a merger of three political parties in opposition to the ABLP. United Progressive Party's platform also abbreviated the UPP, Trends Towards Center Left. They advocate for similar objectives as the APLP, but accuse the opposition as being corrupt. Internationally, Antigua and Barbuda is part of the Commonwealth of Nations, which represents a large group of former UK territories that have recently gained independence. But aside from its politics, Antigua and Barbuda has faced many economic struggles, which we will focus on in the next section. The economy of Antigua and Barbuda is primarily composed of tourism, which makes up approximately 60% of the island's GDP. The country's magnificent beaches, crystal clear waters, and expansive coral reefs make the islands a popular destination for vacationers, particularly from the UK, US, and Canada. Aside from services, industry and agriculture combined constitute around one-fifth of the economy. Cotton, sugar, and various vegetables are among the crops grown locally in Antigua and Barbuda. Some of the raw materials produced by the country are processed and exported to foreign nations. The country exports and imports few goods compared to larger nations, with its main trading partners being the US and Poland. Efforts have been made to expand the economy into transportation, communications, and financial services in order to make the country less dependent on tourism. This comes after numerous times of economic hardship for the nation, including after the global recession in 2009 and hurricanes Irma and Maria, which devastated Barbuda in 2017. Welcome to Antigua and Barbuda Trivia! This episode's question is, what national capital is furthest away from Antigua and Barbuda? The answer will be revealed in the next video. Thank you for watching Antigua and Barbuda Geography, presented by Moton Geography Center. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Special shout out to everyone who made this video possible. You can help us too by contacting MotonGeo at gmail.com or by checking out our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Moton. Link in the description. Our next video will be coming out soon, so make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Geography Moton or Moton Geography Center for weekly updates and info. Until then, Moton Geography wishes you well.